Hello and welcome to the Edupedia Word. In this tutorial of data structure, we are going to study about recursion. So we we'll study what is recursion, the general structure of recursive algorithm, how to do recursive program and manage their stack and we will do some examples. So now let's see what is recursion. Well, the repeated application of a recursive procedure or definition is called recursion. Recursion is a process of repeating items in a self-similar way. So when we say self-similar way, that means you are kind of repeating the elements or repeating a calling of function again and again from within the same function. In programming language, if a program allows you to call a function inside the same function, then it is called recursive call of the function and we will see how it does. Another definition says recursion is an approach in which function call itself with an argument. Upon reaching the termination condition, the control returns to the calling function. Now this is a general format for many recursive function. You can see there is a if statement and there is some condition for which if the answer is unknown currently and then this is a base case like if this happened then this is the solution statement that you need to execute. Otherwise we have general case which is calling the recursive function itself. So your if condition is actually creating a break for recursive function. So if your condition becomes true then your recursive function call will break otherwise it will keep on calling the same function recursively. Now why to use recursion? Well, those examples could have been written without recursion using iteration instead. The iterative solution uses a loop and the recursive solution uses a if statement. So there are number of examples that we'll be studying shortly, which can be even written with iteration. But when we say recursion, so it actually minimizes the line of code and also we we'll see how does it impact. Okay, now however, for a certain problem, the recursive solution is the most natural solution. Build a prototype and a more efficient iterative solution can be developed later. Recursive solution are easier to reason about. The functional programming paradigm adopts a recursion. So one benefit that you gain is definitely lesser line of code is there. And since instead of, you know, calling it iteratively within a loop you are calling the function within the function so the number of loops that it has to process actually reduces and when to choose recursion and when to choose iteration actually depends upon the situation like if when i would say like you know there are huge number of uh, data members or instance variable or i would say local variables that are being used there are huge number of variables in use then recursion usually is not a good way because in that case each time the function is called a stack of that function will be built in memory and those variables will be taking space so each time you are calling, let's say you call the function 10 times and it is having 5 variables being used, then those 5 variables will be recreated for each recursive call. Whereas in iteration, this doesn't happen. So now I think you have got it, like when to use recursion is when you have less number of data elements and simpler like computation. I would not say simpler, but yeah, less number of variables to use so that the memory stack doesn't get very huge. Okay, now let's see one of our recursive functions. So you can see in this example, we are having an int function, which is taking two parameters a and b, and then we are having int result. Then we are checking a condition. If b is equals to zero, then result equals to zero. So this is our base class. Okay, so if your b becomes zero, then the result that we give will be zero. Otherwise, if your b is greater than zero, then the first general case says the result will be a plus recursive call to the same function so you see that within a function function we are again calling this function right and then we are passing a and b minus one so we are reducing the value of b by one and then again calling the same function okay otherwise we are again calling a recursive function result will become 
minus a comma minus b so if your b is less than 0 then this case will you know happen in which we are passing minus a and minus b and finally giving the result now when a function calls within a function so what happened each time a function is called a local memory stack builds up now that stack contains all the like primitive types variable for example int a int b then int result will also be there in that stack and then we have like result zero okay after that when you call this function again so upon that stack another stack will be built up of the same function which will again include a now this time it will include b minus 1 then again it will include result and so and so so till the time this recursive function call get completes i mean it reaches to a condition where it does not have to call the function again which over here is b equals to 0 it will keep on calling the function again and again and thus building the stack trace okay this is what i am talking about this is how the stack begins so you can see initially on the first call the stack begins and we are having a we are having b then it also contains some of our result address then result is a variable it might also contain some of the other fields that it has to use internally so this is like the original call when we say function 5 comma 2 okay so now this is the stack that is formed now when the function call another function that is the second call happens because according to the first call the b value is 2 so therefore the second call will happen it will go into this case right in this case it will call function a and b minus 1 so now it will call with b1 so you see another stack trace is built upon the same stack trace so now this stack is having again you know result which will be 5 and this function calling now a which is 5 b will become 1 this time then result initially it will be 0 so this is the second function call ok so on we can even have a third function call so the stack will be built upon this so in this way you see like whenever we are building a stack so the memory consumption is could be huge if the number of variables are huge so over here we are you know using 3-4 variables that's why it is consuming this much space with each function call now this is a third call so when third call happens when a b becomes 1 then again it will be called with b equals to 0 and again like you know another stack has been built upon that so now this time b is 0 now when uh, this calling will you know it will break when our base condition become true so the base condition was if b equals to 0 now b is equals to 0 now again no more recursive call will happen and this uh, program will halt over here okay so now you know like when the third call completes now let's see let's say if your b becomes zero now the base condition becomes now what will happen so if you see like if i just go back to the code if your b becomes zero then it is saying result will become zero right otherwise it was you know keep on calling the function again and again but now like since the stack has already been built how the things will be removed from stack so you see now when b becomes zero the result has become zero right so see the record of function five zero is popped first okay so firstly this portion will be popped up with the fact value so initially this will be popped up right this portion and once this is popped up second this will be popped up and finally this will be popped up so this is how the stack will become clear so after like after the second call finishes since uh, because it was a recursive function so the initial function is still on now when the second function has to you know get over so it will release its own memory space in the stack and finally the third one releases so when the third one releases the record of the function 52 is popped with the last fact value okay guys so now let's write a recursive program so we'll try to do a factorial program using recursion so i've created a class recursive demo and have created a main method now let's try to create or build a factorial program so you can either take an input from user or you can give a hard-coded input so let me try to take a input from user
Okay, so I'm going to use this end. And now let me take the input. Okay, so I've taken an input. Now I'm going to pass this input in my program known as or in my function which is say factorial. Okay, now let's create this. Fine. So our method signature is created. We have called the method. Now let's write the body of the method. Okay. So since I'm getting a number, all right. So what do you think will be the factorial condition? How do you calculate the factorial? Let's say I have given a number five. Then your factorial will be five into four into two into one, right? So you have to decrease the number each time. Right, so if I just write it something like that, num into all right. So what this thing is doing as far as this ignore the errors and let's see what it says. So it's saying num into multiply factorial num minus one. So initially num was five, so it is multiplying it with the call of recursive function which is factorial so it is multiplying it with the result that we obtain by doing num minus 1 that is result that we obtain by doing 5 into factorial of 4 similarly another call of recursion will be made in which num has currently become 4 so it will do 4 into then 3 because factorial of 3 is again calculated so a recursive call will be formed now let me write a proper code so this is something I want to return, but I need to have a you know break condition like where I want to end. So I want to end my program where you know my recursive call ends. So that will be when my num equals to zero. Okay. So if num equals to zero, then it will return one. All right. Otherwise, it will return num into factorial and since uh, it's returning an integer let me change the return type to void all right now this function is actually will return the factorial now let's run this program once so i have to give the input let me give the input as four all right Okay, I need to actually print the output also. Currently, I'm not printing it anywhere. So, let me write a sys out over here and try printing the output. So you see the output 24 is returned. Right, so the pictorial of 4 is 24 and we're getting the output. Now, let me show you how this actually works in a notepad. Okay guys, so this is a start phrase that I am trying to draw. So initially when the first call of factorial happens, so this is the first call, the value of num is 5. So this is actually yeah, num. Okay, bear with my drawing because um, I'm not too good at drawing but yeah, I'm trying. So this is like num 5 and after that, like when this condition is seen, so if num equals to 0, so this is false, therefore it will go into this. Now it is saying return num into factorial num minus 1. So again a uh, one more call happens. So this is like a second call and in second call what is happening? It is saying num into. So num currently was 5 and it is multiplying it with another call. It is multiplying it with factorial num minus 1. So it is basically calling your factorial function and like what will be num? It will become 4. Okay. So it is multiplying it with 4. Alright. So now this is the second call over here. Num has become 4. Okay. Now again like a cursive call. So again you know it has become 4. Now it will again check if num equals to 0. So this is false. Again this will be executed. Over here it is going to check num into factorial num minus 1. So what was the previous num like you know the previous num was this much okay so now this thing need to be multiplied with your again a factorial of num minus 1 which will become 3 
so the output of this that it will you know like get is num will be 5 into 4 right so this will be 20 so basically it's multiplying your 20 with factorial of 3 all right then factorial of 3 will again you know do a recursive call it will check if num equals to 0 which will become false now your again a call will happen now this time it's num into factorial now this time your number has become like it was 3 but uh, upon the previous multiplication so 20 into 3 will give it Alright, so 60 will become your num and the 60 need to be multiplied with another recursive call. Over here your num will become as factorial of 2. Alright, now factorial of 2 will give your num as 120. Alright, and now your factorial will become 1. After it has become 1, another call will happen which will multiply it with 1 and uh, since like you know after 1 again it will evaluate if num equals to 0 so it's not it's the 1. So the previous result that we have got into factorial num minus 1 will give you 0. Now this time again it will be calculated with 0 and this time your this condition will become true. Alright. Now before this uh, like condition becomes true it says return 1 okay so that means it's like either going to it will not return 1 over here why so because the previous calls for factorial are still over there and they are saying to return something which is this now according to the previous call it will keep now it will you know keep on uh, what could i say keep on removing the things so i should rather write it as 3 and over here as 2 so when it does the remove, then it is actually going to multiply. So the factorial of 2 is will be multiplied with the previous one, which is 3. And then it will be multiplied by 4 and 5. And the final output that we will get will be 120. So this is how the recursion works in your programming. So I hope you got the example, like why this return statement got executed. That's because when your condition becomes true, all the previous call which was pending to be ended due to the secular function will now be popped up from the stack and their result will be multiplied with the previous result. So and so and finally your like the ultimate result will be returned that is 120. Okay guys, so thank you very much for attending this video. I hope you will try some of the recursion example yourself. Thank you very much.